But the other metabolic effects that are, I, th- I think, are also important, and again, not black and white, um, is that if you are doing more of a vigorous type of exercise, going to, going again to lactate being a signaling molecule, lactate signals to your muscle to get more glucose in it, right? Because your muscles are using so much glucose that your body's going, I got to get more of this in here so that I can keep making energy. And so what it does is it increases the production. It's actually what it does. It increases the translocation of what are called glucose for transporters, GLUT4 transporters, which are just below the surface of the muscle. And lactate causes them to go up to the cell surface and kind of it opens up the floodgates for glucose to come in, right? Mm-hmm. And um, this is really, really beneficial because because it is a way of getting glucose out of your circulation, bringing it to your muscle where you want it, right? So um, the elevations in your GLUT4 transporters last for like 48 hours. And it's it's why there have been studies that have come out recently showing that you can do 10 bodyweight squats, um, 10 bodyweight squats every 45 minutes throughout an eight, about eight hour workday. And that'll improve your blood glucose regulation better than a 30-minute walk. Wow. And I timed myself. Is that why myself. You, were, you were just doing those before we started the podcast? <laughs> I was doing it to, for the there. brain. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. but, um, but, but again, so the, the, the more vigorous the intensity of the exercise, the more improved glucose regulation you are going to have. And that is absolutely time and time again proven. So you will improve your glucose regulation by doing more vigorous types of exercise, again, through lactate, which is that signaling molecule. And it's really important to realize we talked about the heart, the aging heart, how it gets stiffer and smaller with age. Well, the stiffness of the heart is actually partly caused by glucose in the vascular system. So the longer you have glucose sitting around in your vascular system, it reacts with proteins, um, it reacts with DNA, lipids, but specifically it reacts with proteins, including collagen. And through what's called the Maillard reaction, it forms something called advanced glycation end products or AGES for short. And these things, they basically cause your proteins to become stiff and they, and they, and they last. Like if you're talking about collagen, collagen in your vascular system or in your myocardium, for example, your pericardium has collagen. Mm -hmm. Um, it gets stiffer as, you know, as these advanced glycation end products form. And it's all a con, a a byproduct of glucose being around for too long. So people with type two diabetes, for example, um, have, you know, problems, stiffness of the blood vessels. They, you know, get cardiovascular disease sooner, all, all sorts of problems. And so, I think one of the reasons that exercise plays an important role in de-stiffening the heart or preventing the stiffness of the heart is um, because of the just enormous improvement in glucose regulation that you're getting from exercise. And um, it's not that you're not getting glucose improvements from doing like zone two. You absolutely are for sure, especially like... Now, if you're comparing again, 20 minutes to 20 minutes, you're gonna get you're gonna get better glucose regulation with more vigorous intensity exercise. But you know, generally speaking, any type of cardiovascular exercise is gonna improve glucose regulation. However, the more vigorous the intensity, the better the improvement, and that is because lactate increases is the is the signal that's increasing those glucose transporters to come up to your muscle and bring in more glucose. I'm trying to understand the distinction between taking that glucose that's sitting in a, sitting around and putting it to work and the impact that that has on you know not stiffening up uh, the heart uh, as you described because you're deploying it you're you're making use of it right but your ability to regulate glucose is a different thing right like those are two different things so what it what is glucose regulation you know that gets modulated or improved as a result of the high intensity exercise I mean that doesn't happen with endurance or strength training I don't know that there is something that doesn't happen with other endurance training I just think it's it's um, a more robust effect if that makes more sense um okay, and there's a lot of different things that are happening but I'd say one of the one of the main things is the disposal of glucose, getting rid of it, right? And that's going into muscle rather than adipose tissue, where when it's stored in adipose tissue, that's that's not a good thing either, right? So you want it to go to your muscle. And so really the regulatory role I'm talking about here is like, like disposal, like getting rid of it through muscle, right? So it's not sitting around in your vascular system for a longer period of time. Um, but, you know, the there's so many different aspects of glucose regulation. Right. That- I, I guess what I'm getting at is more like, okay, so you're, yes, you're, you're, you're making use of it. You're, you're putting it to work. You have these receptors on, on the cells that are able to kind of take the glucose in. Um, but on some level, like 
metabolic health or glucose regulation is a function of pancreatic health, right? Like how how sensitive are you to insulin and mm-hmm. how how functional is that aspect of metabolic health kind of like working? So does exercise have an impact like impact on the insulin sensitivity yes, aspect of yes, it as well? Yes, yes, okay. yes. It's affecting so many different areas of, you know, insulin mm-hmm. sensitivity, glucose regulation um, with respect to the transporters, bringing it into muscle, um, you know, there's a lot of different things that are going on with exercise. Again, it's not like this one thing only. It's many, many things. But the transport, getting that glucose into muscle is a big, it's like a sink. It's like a big, it's a big reason why exercise does improve, you know, your 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 blood glucose levels in general, right? It lowers the long-term marker of glucose, HbA1c. But the thing about HbA1c is, you know, it's a long-term marker of gluco- blood glucose. It's, you know, what? 120 days or so, I think is what it is. It's how long your blood cells turn over. Um, but you have to realize, you know, the collagen that's inside of your vascular system that's lining your your myocardium and your pericardium, like that's, that's there forever, mm-hmm. right? And so when you have glucose reacting with that collagen, we're talking about a long-term effect that's that's forever. It's contributing to the chronic insidious type of stiffening of of the collagen surrounding your your heart and also in your vascular system. So it's playing a role in hypertension, but also in the the stiffening of the heart, you know, through the right. myocardium and periocardium. Right, so right, right. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it is. It it really is, I think, one of the the big reasons why exercise is so important for cardiovascular health also comes down to basically just glucose disposal, getting getting that glucose out of your vascular system. You know, there's another thing I wanted to mention that that comes down to to sleep, and you know, not getting enough sleep also changes a lot of the the glucose regulatory system, including insulin sensitivity, including um, glucose you know, disposal. So going, you know, all all those things we just talked about. And um, what's interesting is that doing high intensity interval training can really ameliorate most of those negative effects from mm. from not getting enough sleep mm-hmm. in terms of like glucose and and how it's like your glucose isn't being regulated uh, and that's something that i i learned firsthand by wearing a continuous glucose monitor yeah. while i was a new mom and not getting sleep you know the f- the first year uh, i was an, a new mom i mean it was like i i was appalled by what was happening to my glucose like the first month i would say when i wasn't exercising it was like in a cave you know and my blood glucose levels were looking pre-diabetic i mean it was like really crazy because I was eating healthy. You know, I wasn't eating a bunch of processed foods. I wasn't eating a lot of highly refined sugars or anything like that. And that's what sort of instigated me to sort of look into the literature and go, what is going on? If you like, if you're getting, you know, fragmented sleep, how is it causing diabetes? And sure enough, there's study after study after study. I mean, just endless data out there showing that it does. And then I came across some studies. What I, what I started to do was spin class and notice that it was totally better. Like my, it, it lasted about 48 hours. So I'd have to do a spin class like every 48 hours. The, the poor sleep remaining constant. Um, the poor sleep was constant. Yeah. I mean, you have to feed, your, you have to feed your baby. <laughs> I'm mom, mom with a baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but the the high intensity interval training, I it mean. It buffered it. It really basically. buffered it. It yeah. really did buffer it. And then, you know, sure enough, you look in the literature and there's, you know, a few studies showing the same thing. And I, I do think it comes down to that. Again, it's increasing those glucose transporters, which are just, when you have a really high density of those on your muscle, it's like just having the sink open. So the, the blood glucose goes into your you know, vascular system and the sink's there and it just goes into it. You know, and it's pretty sensitive for, like I said, about 48 hours. The first 24 hours are the most sensitive, but it's very important. It's very important. Exercise is important to do, you know, even even when you're not feeling like it is, yeah. is the bottom line. 